Okay, so I promised you a full tutorial from start to finish. We're in Poppleton in York. We are Oakwood Garden Rooms, and this is what I'm going to show you what we're going to do. So it's going to be a five by three and a half. It's going to have a bit of everything in. I'm going to give you as much detail as possible. So power and internet. The customer has already run us a Cat5 cable there through his eaves from his um, modem. So he's, it's actually a draw wire, so he's going to pull that. There is his electricity. So both our cables will run down that wall, we'll lift a flag, we'll drop into the gravel path there and we'll shoot straight down there. We'll bring our steel wide armors, which will be 10 mil and our Cat5 cables straight down there towards where the garden room's going to go. If you follow me, I'll show you. It'll carry on down there through the hedges. It'll work its way along here. And over here, we are going to have, it's going to be five metres that way. It's going to be three and a half metres deep. It's going to have uh, three metre al aluminium bifold doors, which will all slide this way. And on this elevation there, there'll be a full opening window. So what we're going to do today, we're going to drop this tree. We're going to drop these two apple trees, which are rotten and full of worm. You see that? Um, and then it's that one's staying and then all these hedges are coming out and there's a fence going to go there as well So this is what we're going to do today. We're going to prep the land. We're not starting until next Monday, but we've already arrived So we've got using this still So it's a M Is it an MS or an M5 Sean? It's an M5 An M5170. It's a starter range for a nice little still saw um, and that'll chop down them trees. It's also got a second job. It's the deck collector We've not had to put it into use yet, but maybe it will and maybe it will make a nice video So we're going to drop these trees and prepare the land and then Monday We're going to drop back and put the rods in and like I say I'm going to give you a full tutorial on every single aspect So if you're watching this and you thought oh, I wonder will you be able to show us how to do this or do that Drop me a comment and I'll do it. And don't forget. I'm selling my plans now on my website as well um, I've got, I think there's seven sets of plans at the moment, but I'm going to put more on. And I've got a competition to win some rods as well. So if you watch the end of the video, if you like and subscribe, and you've got a chance to win the base. Okay, so we'll chop these shoes down and we'll get we'll go from there. <laughs> down now the area is cleared like I said before it's five meters by three and a half deep so we're gonna have everything in this we're gonna have double roof joists we're gonna have a steel over as doors we're gonna have three meter bifolds this will be the front corner we'll have five meters going across over here it will stop over here the bifold doors will all slide that way on this side we've got a window like I said window elevation all these laurels are coming out we're gonna put a fence in there as well and round the perimeter we're gonna have a gravel bed and I'll tell you why in a minute at the front we're gonna have a some composite decking with a gravel bed around and the reason for the gravel bed is because over there he's got one of them um oh god what the call Sean one of them lawnmowers that cuts the grass by itself so that comes out of its little kennel and it'll come round and it'll feel the edge and it will cut the grass around the edge of the building uh, so that's it basically. First day at Poppleton, uh, we're building a five metre by three and a half metre. It's a garden room. Uh, we are Oakwood Garden Rooms. We've got five people on site today. Okay, so we just had a timber delivery. We're using 5 by 2 for the roof, 4 by 2 for the walls. We're putting a fence in as well. We've got 8 mil OSB, which we're going to clad the building in. We've got 18 mil OSB free roofing boards, which we will roof. Over there we've got 22 mil Aga Protect which will be the floor and they are the treated 4 by 3 joists over there. These are the rods that are going to go in. I've actually forgotten to buy the rods so I'm going to have to nip off and get them. Um, but that's, that's the rods that we put in. So if you follow us around we'll show you where we're going to build it. So like I say that's all the timber there. We don't use kit form or anything like that. We build it all from scratch. Customers already run us a Cat5 cable to, for his internet there, so we'll tap into that. There's his electricity, we're going to drop down there, under the flags, and we're going to run straight down there. And this is where it's going to be. So what we're doing there, we cut some trees down the other day, um, we're just going to dig the, the stumps out and get rid of them as well. Um, I'm going to show you now how we're going to set out for the base as well. Okay, so it's five metres long, it's three and a half metres deep, so what we've done, we've strung it out with these... Um, these pins and this string line we've used a foldable square where's that one gone anyone where the square is yeah we've used a foldable square there to square it off 
Um, so basically this is what it's going to be. It's going to be five meters, three and a half meters. So that's the lines that we've pinged out. We'll also put two sets of lines across there. We will dig these corner piles, which will be approximately 200 away from the corner. And then we will have six on the back, six on the front, four down the sides, and we'll have four in the middle. And they will be the piles. So we're going to use a grafter shovel and we use the post hole diggers as well, which will dig it out. It's good ground. We're going to take all the turf up as well. Um, so before we start, I'm going to nip off and get the rods. This is Adam. This is meet the team. Adam, he's been with us how many months, Adam? <laughs> Amy? Yeah. She's been with us how long? Three months. Three months. And Sean's been with us for quite some Seven. time, haven't you? Seven. So that's them three. And this one here is John. John's been with us from the start. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to nip off now and get the sand and cement and the rods and we're going to come back. We'll actually show you how to dig a hole because I know some people wanted to see how to dig a hole and we'll show you how we put the rods in as well. Okay, so John's using the post hole shovel there. What he's done, he's created his little hole on the string line where he wants to be. He's pulled the string line out of the way with his foot. Um, he's going to use the grafter now. You can see this. We took a tree down there, so he's right on the roots, but the grafter will power through that. There you go, he's gone straight through that now. And what he'll do now, he'll, he'll dig it a bit, he'll use the post hole shovel a bit to get it out. Um, you can see the holes there, they're way deep. Um, I'll put a tape measure in them in a minute and you can have a look just how deep they are. There you go, so that's the tape measure going in. That one there is it's approximately 700 deep and it's approximately 200 wide. Right, so what Adam's done there is, that's our steel channel, it's 100 mil by 50 mil, and he's drilled a 25 mil hole in it. We've used this Evolution mag drill to drill the hole in it. And now he's going to cut it with this Evolution chop saw. So there's 28 piles there, you see they strung it out and dug all the holes. John and Amy are now making the rods. Um, they're a metre long, they're M24. And what he'll do, he'll put a steel plate washer on the bottom like that and trap it between two nuts that'll stop your rod driving through the concrete under the weight of the building so you put them all in there ready for concreting and we're going to use a three to one mix which basically is three bags of ballast to one bag of cement and that should get us three holes right so we'll have a look at john doing the rods now like i said we're using a three to one mix probably equates to four to one actually because the bag sizes are different but it's three bags of ballast a 35 kilo each and a 20 kilo bag of cement Provides a good strong mix, so let's go have a look and see what John's doing. Right, he's putting the rods in. Um, you can see the string line there. He's actually got the rods all oh, just just maybe a mil or two mil off the string line, and he's using the level just to plumb them, just to make it easier to get the timber on when we do that. So what he'll do, let's go see he's doing an all from scratch. He'll throw a couple of shovels in first. There you go. And he'll get his rod. Jab it up and down so that there's concrete above and below the washer. And then he'll get it so it's nearly plumb. And what he'll do then, he'll get his level on it and get it nice and plumb against string line. And that'll be it then. We'll get all them rods in today and we're ready to work off tomorrow. These are the four by threes, that'll be our perimeter. Uh, the four point eight longs is not quite long enough, so what we're doing, we're joining them with a splice plate. And these twist nails as well. <laughs> <laughs> so what Sean's doing there is washing off the rods to get any excess concrete off it, so tomorrow the nuts will go down nice and easy. Then he's going to okay, so just to recap, uh, we strung it out, it's five by three and a half metres. We've used our ground pins and our string line to, uh, to string it out. We've used our square to get the angles right. Um, there's 28 piles, so we've dug them, we've removed all the earth. John's made his three to one mix and he's put his rods in and you can see there, they're, they're just off the string line and they're all in line. And then tomorrow when we cut our four by three, it'll aid that by going on nice and easy. So there you go, 28 rods um, in in a day. 
probably 50% cheaper than ground screws. I'd imagine somebody told me that they got a quote for ground screws and they're hundred pound each. So these are probably 50% cheaper. Uh, ground screws maybe cost you maybe 2,800. In fact, maybe 75% cheaper. Okay, so that's today. And tomorrow we will crack on with the base and hopefully get some walls up. All right, so if you'd like to like, subscribe and follow, that'd be wonderful. And don't forget, I'm selling my plans as well. If you want to buy, if you want to build one of these yourself, then the plans are available. There's a host of different sizes for you to choose from and they're only £80. Thank you. OK, so it's day two. Uh, yesterday we put the rods in. See the concrete's now gone off. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take these pins out, get rid of these string lines. We're going to clear the area. John and Amy are setting, setting the laser up over there. We're going to put a weed membrane down and John's going to put his nuts down and lock his nuts off and I'll show you what we're going to do with that. Um, we're going to use a laser but you can also use a spirit level so I'll show you which way you can do it with a spirit level if you haven't got a laser. Okay. So what we're doing now, we're going to put a weed membrane, um, a weed suppressant membrane over the full area. Um, what we're going to do is cut it to roughly size, pull it tight over the rods and then push it down over the rods, the rods there to create a hole in it. Using the lines, the green lines there as a guide. Just so that I can get it sort of relatively down square. Down. And um, what we're going to do now is go around and lock off the nuts. We found the highest point, which is over there. So we'll use that as our datum line and work our way around. So John's levelling his nuts, we're using the staff there with the laser finder on and we're using this Spectra Precision Laser. So I'll show you what he's doing. He's using his staff there to find the height of his nuts and then he'll wind the nuts down to the right height and then he'll lock the nuts off against each other. Like that. That will then provide the base for the shoe to go on and then he'll move on to his next one. I'll just quickly show you how you can do it with a level as well. So if you haven't got a laser, you can do the same thing with a, a level as well. So you sit the level on them nuts there, and what he'll do, he'll find his level, wind his nut up to suit until that's level. And then again, he'll then lock that nuts off. And then what he'd do then, if he was going to do his next one, he will then rotate the level, just in case the level's out, and it'll always rectify itself. I'll be free in front of the rods like that and then what I'll do then is I'll transfer the centre of the line across, use the square to find the centre of the timber and then that mark there is where I'll drill my 25mm hole through. So I'll drill that all the way down, like such. And then when I get to the end, I will then get my drill with 25mm drill bit in and push some holes through there. Right, we're using this Hakoki drill um, and this DeWalt speed bit. What you want to do is try and get your holes nice and straight so that when your rod goes on, it falls on the hole nice and straight. And the motion. Continue to do that all down the length of the timber and then we'll get the circular saw and chop a bit off the top and I'll show you why we do that in a minute. Not 50 mil at all. So what Amy's in now is set the depth of the circular saw so that the nut can get recessed into the timber. I'm going to follow in her behind and he's just going to just chop it out there. So that when we tighten the nut down it'll be all the level. Um, obviously the nuts are locked off, they'll support it and they'll now lift the timber the top of it and drop it down onto the rods. The rods are 24 mil rods, the hole's 25 mil, so there's not a lot of tolerance for manoeuvre. So give it a little tap with a sledgehammer sometimes and that'll be good. I am watching it. Get it square, like Timber's on now, then what we'll do is wind the nut down in that recess and John's going round now and he's just nipping the nut down, which will secure the base to the floor. Sit the side one, sit it on top of them. Again, mark out for the nut. 
we'll drill them and then we'll drop that down and as it's going down we'll then chop that off there which is good. itself up there you go that will drop down now it'll sit on top of the front and back one and then I'll just chop it off there and change so I'm just sure Right, so there's the base, practically in and done and dusted now. Adam's putting up the log, Amy and Sean are putting the nuts down, uh, Amy's driving the 250 mil screws in, keep all the frame tight together. So we've got uh, three bays, one, two and three. Uh, we've done that so that the 4 by 2 hasn't got a big span, so that will be all supported. And then we'll put our 4 by 2s across there on joist hangers and in full with insulation as well. There you go. That's uh, five meters that way and three and a half meters that way. Just notching the uh, joist hangers there so that we can bend them over. What we'll do then, we'll, we'll bend that over there, flatten that and nail them round. Okay, so that's all the 4 2 joists gone in for 400 bays. Uh, you can see them in the brain over the joist hangers there and they're going to nail them all. Where we've not been able to get um, the joist hanger on, like this one there. Because it falls on the shoe, we put two 250 screws through there and we've been fixing these joist hangers with these twist nails. Like I say, they've been cut, bend them over, nail them there, bend them over there, nail them there. And then we're also putting in these slate lats there, which will support the insulation and stop it falling through. So what Sean's doing there is fixing the slate lats to the other side of the 4v2, which will then support the insulation. He's using the pass load, 90mm nails, spiking them through. Um, Adam and John are cutting the insulation to drop into the base then. As you can see, we've done them. We'll finish all these bays and we're going to start putting the flooring down on top as well. We're using 22mm Ergo Protect, it's the best on the market, nobody else is using this strength of flooring. What you can see is I've hung the floor over so that it just glides past the shoe and then when the OSB goes on that will go past there as well. We are screwing it down with these 60mm screws. This Makita Brushless DTD 171 impact driver and we keep breaking the bits. They're a pile of crap, we won't be buying them again. We're now currently using these wearers to see if they're any better. And we are using the five minute glue. Why do we use five minute glue? Because we have no patience. There you go. So a little tip for you what I'm doing, going wrong and I'm marking up where the 4v2s are because otherwise we'll be able to see them. Okay, so that's us done for today. Um, I have a couple of pieces of board shot the floor that I've under ordered. Um, so what we've done, we've put our 4B3s and our 4B2s down. They're all pressure treated. They're off the floor on the pile system there. You can see the shoes as well. We've dropped in 100mm rigid coil backed insulation, which is sat on slate lats. We've fixed the joist hangers and twist nails. We've dropped in this 22mm Ager Protect flooring, which we fixed down with the 60mm screws. And I'll just show you something. For all them people who recommend wearer bits were great, you can see how many have actually broke there. Uh, so they're not all that at all. Um, the reason why we haven't put the membrane down, which we normally do, is because come this time of year, it tends to trap rainwater and then when the building's drying out, the rainwater comes back up through the floor and it just causes us problems. So it's over engineering, but I'd still do it. But if it's going to be wet, then I'd sack it off. So 
Um, that's why that's not gone down there. So tomorrow we're going to get all the walls up and we'll probably get the roof structure on as well. Okay, so it's day three. What we're going to do today is going to finish this floor we didn't finish yesterday. I'm going to get the blower, blow off that water because it's pissed it down last night again. Uh, these guys are scraping off the five minute glue. Um, and then we're going to blow the water off, then we're going to get the frameworks up, we're going to get the walls up, we're going to get the walls OS speed, and we're hopefully going to get the roof structure on, and then God knows what we're going to do tomorrow, because it's going to pee it down all day. Right, we're going to build the back wall now, we're going to build it out of 4x2 CLS, so you can see what John's doing there, he's put his two long lengths of timber together, he's marking his 400 centres all the way along, and then what we'll do, we'll split the top and the bottom rail, and there's our uprights, what Amy's getting out now that we've previously cut, Sean, that we've previously cut. Should we start again, Sean? Okay, so we're putting our uprights in there as well. So we've dropped the back plate there, the top plate there. John's marked his 400 centers. We are gonna nail it with the Pazlord IM350 Plus, and we're using 90 mil galvanized nails in that as well. We'll put three nails in each one. And um, what we're gonna do, we're gonna build the back wall in situ, clad it and stand it up, and we're gonna do the same with the sides on this one as well. They're the timbers for the uprights. We've already cut, they're pre-cut. The boards over there, they are old imperial size boards, which they all tend to be. So they're four foot, whereas your plaster boards 1.2. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna rip a piece off all the boards to create the 1.2 board. What I'll do with them as well, I will mark up the boards for the 400 centers. So when they put the board on the top, they'll be able to see where they can nail. Okay. Right, so the, the CLS is 4.8 long, the building's longer than that. So we've had to make an additional frame at the end, which they're now gonna to fix together and then we're going to always be the full frame and stand it up. And these boards are square. If we square the OSB with the frame and then do that all the way along, then the wall will be square and plumb when it goes up. And you can see I've put the lines on there so that he knows where his foreigners are to nail to. Okay, right, so he's going to nail that corner there. Right, then what we're going to do is get this line in line with the timber so Amy will get that right down there and then she'll nail that. She can then nail up this line. Whoa, 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 uh, wait, Amy. That up that line. This line. Up this line. Check the depth on the door, It's too deep. It's too deep. Knock it off a fifth couple. Right, and then what we need to do then is see that wall there isn't right, so that needs squaring up. Yeah. Right, a bit more, John. Amy, push that board to me, please. No, you have to push it rather than hitting it, it's bouncing back. There. Come and nail that long, Sean. Sean. Just nail it, mate. Put this side of the bed. Like this. Put him outside the bed. And then when we carry on all the way along, as long as we keep our CLS in line with the top of the board, that'll mean the wall's straight and square. So you can see the OSB there is hanging over the bottom. That's so that it flies down over the framework. So what Amy's gonna do now, she's gonna follow the lines that I've guided and then she knows where to nail. So again, he's squaring that frame up. Just get this corner, look, nail that corner there. Nail down that line then, Amy. Go down towards Sean. And what we'll do then, you can see the frame's running out again there. So that frame will have to be pushed across so that that is flush with the top of the frame. Go to the side of the ball. That side of the ball. There, nail it, John. I've done it. So that's the full wall OS speed, um, which, I mean, because we squared it off when we stand that up, that should be square. What Adam's doing now is he's going round and he's putting a chicken mesh skirt on the bottom of there to stop any vermin going under. I mean, you're never going to stop a mouse, but it'll stop rats or foxes or anything like that. Um, what we're going to do now, we're going to, we've marked our battens there so that we know where our 400 centres are, and we're going to put this breathable membrane on the building and then fix the slate battens on there as well. Yeah. Pull it tight! Oh. Right, so they're putting the breathable membrane on now. It's um, a moisture breathable membrane, a roofing membrane basically. They're putting a few staples in that just to hold it in place. Um, we'll overlap it by 150 mil and then we're going to put some vertical slate battens on and then some horizontal slate battens as well. What they're doing now, they're fixing the vertical slate battens on. Uh, again, we're using the 90 mil Pazlod nails. And then we'll put some horizontal ones on as well uh, for, to finally carry our feather edge boards, which will be vertical as well. So I 
she's going along now and she's doing her horizontal buttons. Yeah, next one's off. So the reason why we're doing two slate buttons is to give um, airflow, uh, so that when the exterior cladding gets any moisture on it, it does dry off, because it's got airflow behind and to the front as well. So what we're going to do now, the wall's just going to get stood up and it'll drop down the side and the OSB that's hanging over. It's going to fall off the back, pull it to you! Pull it to you, it's too close! Uh, too much, too much. Right, no, check your charms. Check your charms in. She can see it. But it might not be, if we do it, it's side of the floor. Yeah, it's actually fine. Okay, so it's going to go up now. Right. There you go. So you can see now, that's now sat on the floor there. Um, what we'll do now, we'll push it in situ. John's just going to move it across it that way a little no, bit. It needs sending to him. And um, once I've located that in place, we'll hap when we're happy it's in the right position, we'll then fix it. Do you want to move? So the side wall's going to go up now. We've done the same scenario again. We've clad it in place and when we'll stand that up, that'll be plumb and we'll fix it to the back wall then. Yeah, it's just getting it so that it, when it drops down, the OSB there drops down the side rather than the wall fall off the floor. Yeah, starting to take shape now. There you go, that's third wall up. Right, what Amy's doing now, um, the back wall and the side walls are up, but obviously we need to support the front there and get it plumb. So John's going to plumb it, and what she's going to use is that brace and fix the brace to the floor. Once John gives it, it's okay with the clear, you know, when it's plumb, and then she'll drive it into the floor and then that'll secure that side. Happy? Right, so he's not happy, so don't take it in the car and redo it. Amy, pull it to the side, it'll locate in the same hole. Just move it. That's it, that's it. So it's pretty critical that we actually get it 100% bang on, because obviously the doors are going to sit in here as well, when the front walls have gone on. If he's happy, then you'll give it okay. Yeah. yeah, he's happy with that. So what they're gonna do now, they'll do the same on this side as well, and then we'll put the front two walls on. I'll show you what we've done with them walls because we've dropped the top down a little bit there. I don't know if you can see it just there. There's a little drop down. That's where the steel's gonna sit. So he's doing the same on this side again. Make sure it's 100% plumb before she fixes it. So now basically what we've got there is we've got the three walls up, the, the back corners are held because they're right anyway. Um, we've put them two braces in now, so they'll now put the front wall in and I'll explain what we're going to do with that because that definitely needs to line through dead straight for the doors. So what we'll do, we'll put one in the middle as well, um, just to take any bow out of that back wall. Right, so what they're doing now, um, we've put a string line on the front of this building. Um, what we've done, we've put a screw there on that front wall and we've put a screw there on the front wall and what we want is for these two walls to run dead through in line with each other so that when we put the steel on the walls plumb and square. So by means of doing that we put a tight string line on the bottom, put a block in that end there. We'll put a block in this end now as well. There you go, he's put his other block in there like that. And then when we slide this block down there can you see how that's you know it needs, it needs to go a bit more jump there you go so that there then will line them through so we can fix that timber down there we'll do the same on this wall over here go on, John, I'll let you down. look just let me get there so I can see it there you go so what we'll do now is just try we'll just slowly John so I can see it send it down so I can see it John move it on that's it there you go so there now we know them walls are running through perfectly in line with each other. The front, wall. the front wall's higher than the back wall so we've formed a pitch on the roof. It's a 75mm pitch that we've provided. 
Um, if you can just see there, the front wall comes and then it drops down. There's a 200 mil opening there and a 200 mil opening there. And what'll happen there then, there'll be a steel that runs across there that sits in there. That will then finish flush with the top of the wall. So what John's gonna do now, he's gonna put some more vertical props in there to plumb them two front walls up and then we should be good. Right, so what we're gonna do now is fully OSB'd. Um, we're gonna then put this um, steel beam in. So it's, uh, it's a steel hollow section. It's 160 that way, it's 80 that way, it's five mil thick and we've filled it with rock wool to stop any cold bridging going across it. So that's going to be lifted above up there and then fixed with some tech screws. Well, we can yeah, it's relatively heavy, but it's, it's no, no more than a two-man lift, to be fair. I'm going to shoulder press it up. See, what they're going to do, they can guide it up there and it can't go forward because it's on the OSB. What they'll do now is push that tight to the OSB. You pushed it tight to OSB, yeah? Yeah. Right, so what'll happen then, that's in. That's great, this is lintel. Um, just pass us a bit of 4 2 there, will you, Sean? We'll put a tech screw up into there, same over there. We're then going to drop some 4 2 on the face of it and tech screw that into that and fix that through there so that will all be then secure. This will then give us some timber to fix the joist hangers on for his roof. Upside down joist hangers. Isn't it, Sean? Just a little note for all you home builders. Um, all your offcuts of OSB, which you've cut off from your bottom of your boards, you want to rip them down and do the likes of above your steel and below your doors. Also, the end cuts off the 4B2 CLS. We're going to cut all them down and use them for noggins in the walls. So, we've put the 160 steel on there. You can see John now. He's tech, tech, tech screwing the timber into the steel and then what we'll be able to do then when we put our roof timbers on, put the joist hangers on upside down and fix to that. Also gives something for the plasterboard to keep to. For all you who've got a little bit excited there, cheers look. Okay, so like I said, um, all your offcuts of your OSB, you want to rip them down and use them for where you need them. So we're packing out under there. Jordan's also going to fix these 160 mil rips there to the steel with the tech screws as well so you know you've got very little wastage I mean that's what we've got left of the OSB sheets which is less than nothing um, all these offcuts of the 4B2 will be used as noggins which Adam's going to put in I mean this this that there is the wastage we've left so any of you guys that are wanting to do a home build pack and you're thinking about your materials and stuff like that well with the quantities that I'm giving you that's the kind of wastage you're going to have if you build them right uh, on another note, they are generic packs, so I'm not doing bespoke anymore. And on another note to that, what was the other note I wanted to tell you? Can't remember, I'll drop it in another time anyway. Okay, because the roof span's over three metres, what we're going to do is double up these joists. So the fibre tools, we're going to turn them into a four by two by means of bolting together. Um, just so that the timbers are flush with each other, what we're going to do, John's going to run down with the nail gun first. Amy's going to pull it left and right to straighten them up so they're both in line. Then John will jump on the corky drill and drill for the bolt holes. We'll then bolt it and nut it in as well. All right, John. Double nail it. So what he's doing, he's getting Amy to pull it left and right so that both timbers are flush with each other. To me, Mark. Yeah. Sometimes you've got to really over accentuate the pull on it just to get them in line with each other, but then you'll have a nice 4v5 when it's finished. So it's plenty yeah. strong enough for this roof span. We use M10 bolts. Um, I've, I've, so it's some I've got from home, they're a bit longer than what we need, um, but we're going to grind them off and I've got some more shorter ones that we're going to put in. Right, so he's double nailed that now. He'll jump on the, the corky drill, which has got a 10 mil drill bit in it. What he's going to do then, he's going to drill a series of holes at this end. That's for the cables. Um, it's a lot easier to drill them while they're on the deck now, so that we can run our light cables in through the holes. Don't forget your end bolt. Is 
So he's putting them bolts at around, they're around 400 centers. Adam will follow behind and just drive that bolt through. As soon as they're rolled over then they'll put a washer and a nut on it. He'll be able to jump on with impact driver and drive them down. Like I say, I've ordered, the bolts I had at home were too long, but we'll whip them off with a grinder. It's sort of a production line stuff, really. Just one thing follows another. Everybody knows their place. Everybody knows what they're doing. A little teamwork kind of thing going. Right, somebody asked me um, why we use nails instead of screws, and this is the reason. So they, they snap straight away. Them ones, you're going to be a long time bending them before you've actually snapped them. So that's the reason why we use screws, uh, nails rather than screws. Okay, so that's day three finished. So we've done the base, we've done the walls, we've used 4 by 2 CLS on the walls, we've clad it in an 11 mil OSB. We've also built the front wall out of 5 by 2 C16. We've put in this steel section. Nobody else is putting steel above their doors. There's only us that put steel in the way it should be done. We put the timber on the back of the steel there, which will then carry the upside down joist angles, which will strap the roof on. The roof's over three meters in span. So we've doubled up the roof timbers. Um, and you can see there we've bolted every 400 on them. So they've got like um, a four by five now, bolted every 400. Nice solid roof timbers take the weight of the snow when it comes um, we've put the breathable membrane around the building John started putting the slate lats on we built the walls in situ and stood them up we've double slate battened it for the reason that it allows airflow to travel behind so when your cladding gets wet your cedar will still dry out and it'll last longer we've double battened on the back that's going to be feather hedge feather hedge feather edge you can see down there Adam's put a chicken wire skirt around the bottom to keep vermin out and foxes and stuff like that you're never going to stop a mouse but at least it'll keep a rat and a fox out as such um so that's it um what where are we now John so we're gonna it's gonna rain tomorrow so I'm not sure if we're gonna be here tomorrow um if we are here then we'll get this roof finished we'll get it boarded we'll get the rubber over it temporarily and we'll insulate with 50 mil seat um insulation so doors three meters all sliding that way there's a window to the side there that's a top hung full open a window there so it's a beautiful sized garden room in a beautiful garden in a beautiful part of the country poppleton in york so if you'd like to like subscribe follow and all the rest of that business that's great and thank you 20,000 subscribers, absolutely over the moon with that. Thanks to everybody who subscribed and all the fantastic comments as well. Um, don't forget, plans are for sale. I'll bring you outside in a minute now and I'll show you um, what, what I mean by the materials list. So the materials list, you're gonna have very little left over. I mean, the likes of the roof timbers there, the offcuts are then your 400 noggins. The offcuts of the CLS timbers are your noggins in there as well. The offcuts of your OSB, for the bottom trims and the top trims. So everything is used, got very little wastage. I've showed you some of the wastage today. We've got five bags of wood outside, waiting for somebody to come and collect them for firewood. Okay, so it's day four, we're on the roof today. Um, it's raining and it's been raining, so I don't know how long we're gonna be at it. But like I said yesterday, the roof span is over three meters. It's three and a half meters. So we've doubled up the five by twos and they are now 4B5s. God, that took a bit of calculation. We've also put these coach bolts through them as well. M10 bolts. I'll just rotate that and you can see. And um, we've nutted them and tightened them on. We've drilled three holes at the front. And the reason why that is because that will then allow our cables to go down for the roof lights, the canopy lights, and the internal lights as well. So I'll give you a uh, full explanation as to the roof and how we do it. And also the, how we make up the infill on the side for the uh, for the gradient on the roof, which I, somebody wanted me to do a clearer video of as well. Right, so it's a bit hard to show you, but th this is the first the first double joist we're putting on. That there is the outside wall. 
So if you can see my finger there, so this part of the joist is in line. Oh, God, it's really hard to show you. This part of the joist is in line with that part of the wall there. So when we plasterboard the ceiling, uh, the plasterboard will butt up to the wall there, and we'll also put a timber down there. So when we plasterboard the wall, there's something fixed there. Uh, I'll get Adam to go inside and show you now, and it might be an easier video. Yeah. Right, so this angle might be a bit better. So if you imagine the plasterboard comes through now, and it will butt up to the wall there, because we're going to put a timber there on that wall. When we plasterboard there, we can fix to that, and this one will butt up to there. So this line here on this double joist needs to be in line with that line. Have you got that, Adam? Yeah. Yeah? So what we'll do is make sure that that is in line all the way down that wall line. And that's our starting one then. And we'll use our 400 spacers to space these off. We've got a little spacer block at the front there to hang them over. So we know they're all hanging over the right distance as well. Um, that's it. That's what we're going to do now. What? Right, so all the dual joists are in there. We've spaced them at 400. And across the steel, I'll just show you the front of the steel detail here. So we've put a joist hanger on there. We've only got single joist hangers. You can get a double one, but what we've done, we've just modified it a bit and bent it over so that then that will tie that down to these timbers that we've tech screwed to the steel as well. Um, and we'll put, we'll fill all them holes there with twist nails. So that's, that's all that. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna put a front timber on and then we'll put a back timber on and then we'll do a size and I'll show you how we do a size. Right, so all the main timbers are in, the front timbers are in. You can see where we've had to join it there um, because obviously it's not long enough. So what we've done is joined it halfway, halfway on one of them timbers rather than halfway in that joint there so it's not stepped. Um, what we're going to do now is put side trimmers on. So we've let these front and back overhang. We're going to cut, cut another one now and just drop it in there and then put some some noggins in there to support it and I'll show you how we're going to do them again. Right, so what we've done, there's some blocks there that are just by Amy there, going to space it off, that'll give us enough clearance on his overhang to put um, a line of cedar on because it's having cedar on there. I don't know if you can see, she's pencil marked that there. Sean's pencil marked that one there as well. Sean, do you know where which side you're putting it to? Put, put your cross to where you're putting it to and then you can't go wrong, can you? Your timber's going in there. Yeah. Right, so we'll lift this up now and fix it in place. Right, so if you can just see there, it like tapers up because that's the picture of the roof into a triangle shape. So what we're going to do, I'm going to drop some timbers down the back like this one. Yeah, and then we're going to fix them through there at the bottom and then they'll be flush with that and then we'll tie the roof joist into that as well. So the roof joist will be tied into the wall and then you've got somewhere to plasterboard there. Right, so there's a bit more detail on that I'll try and show you now. So what we've done, we've cut a bit of 5 2 there. We've dropped it down. Adam screwed it through the wall below. And then this, this joist there will then screw to that. What we'll do then, he'll, he'll pin, pin that to the joist. And then that's a spacer nog in there. That, that's our spacer nog in there. Pop that in, and then when that's fixed through to that, then that will hold the side trimmer on as well. So there's the roof, uh, it's 95% finished now, it just wants three rows of noggins in. We've um, put our back trimmer on, we've put our side trimmers, we've got our supports on it. We've also got our front trimmer along there, and they're just finishing the other one over there. Um, and then with three rows of noggins, down the, one down the centre, one down the centre of each of that, and we'll be good. On another note, there's the joist hangers that Sean's nailing on now. They're upside down joist hangers, which are supporting the roof. You need to make sure your roof's secured down. Um, we spiked through there as well, but we can only get sort of one in each side. That's why they use the upside down joist hangers. Now you can see the steel sandwiched in between the CLS there and the OSB, which is outside of the building. Don't forget we filled that with rock wool as well. So that's the full roof up now. Uh, double duck 5 by 2 C16 timber. We've bolted them every 400. We've got our OSB free roofing boards up and ready for the morning. If we've got a dry spell, we'll get them on. Three sets of noggins. That's a nice big solid roof there.
day five, uh, we're going to put the roof on today, but there's a little bit of rain and we're just going to insulate the walls whilst we wait for the rain to pass. Uh, what we're putting in the walls, we're putting 50 mil rigid insulation boards, foil backed. We're also going to put some sound blocking at uh, a later point. We haven't got that at the moment. Right, if you want to come over here, I'll show you what the crack is. So the walls are 4 by 2 and you've got like 90 mil finish on the wall. So that 50 mil has gone in there. It goes tight up to the OSB because it's the same scenario as the hot and the warm cold roof, which you all like to talk about. If you leave the air gap there, the air will condensate when it meets the cold outside. So the air wants to be on the inside. So the insulation wants pushing to the back. We're also going to put sound block in there as well. Um, like I say, it wants filling all the gaps. Um, in the ones there, we've also put some rock wool in there. You can see when we built that, because obviously we won't get it in there. So that's it basically. We're going to get all the walls insulated and then we're going to jump up on the roof. These are with an old hand saw. There you go. If I've got a break in the rain, what we're going to do, we're going to drop on these OS3 roofing boards, OSB3 roofing boards rather, 18mm thick, the tongue and grooved. We're going to fix them down with a pass load. We are going to use 63mm ring cut nails. Amy will show you why they're ring cuts. You can see the rings on them. It stops them pulling back out and stops any movement. Um, we're going to fix them together with Everbuild 5-minute lumberjack wood adhesive. And why do we use 5-minute glue? Because we've got no patience. There you go. So your first board, what we've done, we've fixed it down. We've made sure it's going straight through on that back line. What I'll do then, I'll just temporarily put this one like that. Make sure the joint is good and then I will use another board as a straight edge like such and when, when I know that joint is good there and that joint is good there then I know the boards are running through. It's important to get your first rows right and then all your rest of your rows will follow suit. Writing goes down on these. Uh, the writing goes down for the reason so if you were doing it and it was under building control then the building inspector would be able to see if you used the right quality boards. So board, board, off cut from there, we'll go there, just like fitting a laminate floor and just keep going that way until we get to that end. Okay, so if you keep watching, I'll show you the roof finished and hopefully by that time, John will have turned up with the rubber and we can get it protected in case any rain does come. Thank you. That's the last board done, so that's the roof all boarded out. We're going to wait for this glue. I mean, it started going off already. What we'll do then, we'll go around, get it off. We'll go around then and get any little burrs up like that. Get rid of all them so they're not going to affect the rubber. Give it a little rub down and then John is on his way with the rubber. Make sure we've punched any nails down that are still sticking up. Um, like so that, I don't know if you can see that, he's just proud, so he just wants knocking back down. We'll go around and check the full roof and then plane it off. So what I'm going to do now is scrape to fall the five minute glue which has now gone hard. So what we're doing now, we're going around and make sure that there's no nails or any burrs sticking up anywhere. I'm going to clean it off, give it a little rub down with sander, Makita sander, and we're going to blow it off with this little blower. So the roof's just getting its final touches, finishing off, bit of sanding where the glue is, any burrs that's sticking up, get rid of them. And then we are going to use the still leaf blower, which is one of the best tools I own. Better than any sweeping brush at all. Right, so rubber's arrived. We're not going to glue it down today, but we're going to sit it on the roof. Um, John's just warming up there, flexing before he lifts it. It's quite heavy, obviously. There's about 70 or 80 kilos in that, I'd imagine now. But um, it's the shape of it that doesn't help. Nightmare to get up. <laughs> so what we're going to do, we're going to get up on the roof, stretch it out, hold it down with some slate battens around the side and leave it till Monday. Have an half day today because it's Friday, Amy. Right. Watch it on them old step ladders from John so that they're steady. I want to help in my system as well. I'll push it back. Drop it. Oh, on, nearly. Alright, you're going to send it more than that, mate. I'm going to get it from Go, 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 go. Amy, we're pulling it 
quite a lot of weight in it. Do you want to go over there, baby? There's quite a lot of weight in it. Oh, maybe even more than... What do you reckon? 100 kilos, John? Right, so... Because it comes from the factory on a roll, there's often creases in it, which you're not going to get out with the best will in the world. Yeah. So... What I did last time, this is with, it's six, it's 6 6.1 by 6. But what I did last time, I made a bit of a mistake and the joint in it, the factory joint in it, I had running that way, which caused me a problem because when I tried to put the gutter trim in, it was a nightmare to get the gutter trim on the double part of the thing and it was running right along the line. Don't you walk backwards off there, you. So you can see it's a massive piece of rubber. It's one piece, therefore it will not have any joints in it apart from the factory ones which are obviously done perfect and they're never going to be an issue well, what I'm going to do now obviously you've got to be really careful with edge at roof is pull it to where it wants to go Try. I don't really want to be standing on it too much it doesn't really matter but it's just to avoid any damage to it so I've got it over there now. It's something that you don't really want to be doing on your own, to be fair. Um, do you want to stand in that corner, Amy? Because of the weight of it. <laughs> right, but there you can see. I've not, I mean, of all the roofs I've done, I've not mismeasured yet. So if you're doing one of these yourself, you need to make sure your measurements right because it's expensive and you don't want to cut yourself short so there you go um for those of you that are going to comment and say why didn't you put the right inside down which is there can you see that right it's on both sides so there is no right or wrong way so what i'm going to do now i'm going to make sure when i catch my breath that it's hanging over enough i mean then we can see there i've let it hang over loads what we're going to do then we're going to fix some slate buttons along there and pin it to it so that the wind doesn't take it off over the weekend. And that then will keep us um, nice and dry. Now it comes in um, different sizes. Um, obviously the length is, is fine, but the actual width of it comes in different sizes. So because this roof is a bigger roof, we've had to go for a deeper one. So what I'm going to do now, because all that spare there hanging over is just cut it off. Stanley knife just goes straight down it. Watch you look for all of that roof, you. For all of you that have got a little thing for Amy as well, I'm going to try and get her to get on camera later. She might release a calendar yet yeah, if there's enough interest. I've heard she's interested in it. <laughs> she says she's taking booking, so if you're interested in one, just drop me a message and we might get a little calendar together. The next year right so what i'll do now with them slate buttons i'll pin them on sean will you throw us some 90 mil nails and a hammer please in the slate button so this roof now it'll relax that there's a factory crease you're always going to get them i mean they're annoying but sometimes you can get them out sometimes you can't um we'll just have to see hammer there please john can I have some 90 nails as well john yeah. just, uh, slate lats please so what we're going to do now, yeah, 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 is just pin these slate lats to hold the rubber down, stop the wind taking it off at the weekend, because it will do. What you want to do, though, is just, I don't know if Amy can see there, I'm fixing actually lower, as low as I can into the roof, and then that way then, I'm not going to risk putting a hole in the rubber where I don't want the hole in the rubber, if you know what I mean. So what we'll do basically is that all the way around. Don't send them all the way in and then it's easier to get them out in end. And that'll secure the rubber for the weekend. Um, I'll give you a little show, a little look around what we're doing inside as well. And um, that'll be us done then. Thank you. Okay, so it's five days in. We've come to an end now of this week. So I'll let you have a look around back and show you what we've done. We'll start back and go around to the front. So if you follow me, right, oh, Amy's around there. She's obviously a bit camera shy. So we'll go catch in with her. Come on, let's have a look. Keep nice and quiet. I know a lot of you have got a little thing for Amy. Amy, Amy.
<laughs> okay, so we've finished, it's Friday. Um, if you take the hours that we put into it, it's actually four days, it's one o'clock now, um, and we're all in the pub. <laughs> so we're four days in, so um, I've showed you how to put the piles in. I've showed you that we used the 4B3s and the 4B2s treated um, timbers. We put us in 100ml insulation in the floor, 22ml agar protect. We screwed that down. We've used five minute glue, and the reason we use five minute glue is because. Right, it's getting old now, isn't it? Um, and then we use 4B2 CLS for the walls, 5B2 C16 timbers for the front walls. We've clad it in an 11mm OSB. We've wrapped it in breathable membrane then, and we've used 5B2 C16 roof choice, which we've doubled up and bolted with M10 bolts every 400. Then we've put OSB free roofing boards on the roof, and we've dropped the rubber over this morning, and we've also put 50mm insulation in the walls. Um, next week we're going to put some sound block in the walls as well. We'll get that first fixed, first fixed electric. I'll show you how to do that as well. We'll insulate the ceiling and we'll drop back on the warm and the cold roof debate, which keeps on trundling on. Um, we'll get it plasterboarded, we'll get it plastered. Hopefully we'll get doors and windows next week and we'll get a cedar on. And we're also going to put a bit of decking, gravel board and a full fence down the back. And that'll be it, the job will be done. So if doors and windows don't let us down next week, we'll be finished by Friday, I'd imagine. Okay, so it's day seven, we're in Poppleton. Uh, day six was yesterday. Um, I had some other stuff I needed to be doing yesterday, so I went in, but the guys and girls, I've got on with it yesterday. So what we've done, We've put 50 mil fallbacks insulation in the ceiling. The reason why we've used 50 mil is because the customers requested sound block on this as well. We've took some sound block out there so that the light can go in the recess. We've done it on the walls as well. You can see there, we've got 50 mil insulation there and we've got this 50 mil rock wool sound block insulation. Really good stuff, really deadens the sound. These are patrices we've put in the wall. There's patrices there for the TV bracket, patrice there for the consumer unit, and also patrice there for the heater, which we'll be putting in. So today, what we're gonna do, we're gonna get the moisture barrier. We are gonna staple that to the full building, and then we're gonna plasterboard with these 12 and a half mil plasterboards. Now, um, in a minute, I'll explain to you about the one, the cold roof scenario yet again, but you can see now the roof's starting to really take shape. There's going to be a window over there, there's going to be bifolds there, you can see we've put the steel there. And all you home builders, people that have bought the packs um, on my Facebook group, you can all see that you've been using the steel and putting it in. And you're all doing a good job because some of the builds look like our builds, don't they Sean? Mm -hmm. They do. <laughs> right, so we first fixed the electrics. Um, what we've done with them, we've tacked them to the top and then when we put the insulation in, we've cut a little track out. So that insulation is tight to the ceiling, so there's no air gap. So what I'll do, as soon as I brought these plasterboards in, I'll explain the hot and cold roof scenario. Sips panels and walls as well. And why, for the people that are bitching about my hot and cold roof, why that the walls are exactly the same as the Sims, uh, Sips panels as well. But we'll go down that road in a minute. So we're going to put these 12 and a half mil plasterboards on. We're going to use 38 mil jip rock screws. We're going to use the impact driver. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, we're going to staple up this moisture barrier with this DeWalt staple and some 12 mil staples as well. Hot and cold roofs, right, here we go again. They are your roof timbers, like such. That is your OSB or ply or whatever it is you've used for the top of your roof. Right, so a cold roof, there's your plasterboard, there's your moisture barrier, there's your insulation. And that there is your recommended 50 mil airflow gap. That then needs venting at the front and the back. So that's your cold roof, warm roof. There's your top, joist, plasterboard. Then your insulation goes on top of the roof. Then you need another layer of ply or OSB free and then whatever roof covering you choose to use. So that's your insulation there. That's your warm roof. That air then does not condensate because it doesn't come into contact with the cold. That air there comes into contact with the cold air there and condensates and can form mold if it's not vented properly. Right, so 2.5 is the maximum height you can have on these permitted developments from the highest point of land. Right, so what we have to do, because we can't extend our roof up that high, otherwise we are gonna lower our roof internally and compromise our head height. So your head height then 
becomes very small and you have to bend over to sit in the room. So what we do, we have a sort of a hybrid roof. That's our roof choice. That's our OSB free roofing on there, right? On this one, what we've done, we've pushed our 50 mil insulation tight to the top. There is no air in there, yeah? And then on this one, it's actually, sorry, 60 mil we've used on this one, thanks Adam. And then, because you want sound block, we've then put our 50 mil sound block in there. We've then put our moisture barrier on, which Amy is stapling and Sean will show you now. So that's going on the roof and the walls complete. And then we will put our plasterboard there. There is no air in this cavity. Our cables are tacked tight to the side of the joist. The insulation is then cut around the cable like that. So there's no air in this cavity to condensate. Therefore, it's not going to condensate. Therefore, it doesn't need airflow. So that is your hybrid roof, right? You've got to do that because of the 2.5 so that you don't have to bend down. So for them people that are going to go, it's not right, it's not this, it's not that. What about your SIPS panels? SIPS panels, OSB, 100 mil insulation, OSB. That is your full SIPS panels. You put that on the roof, that there is practically the same as that. Now, when you join your SIPS panels together, you've got your timber in there that joins them together. So that's there's insulation, that there's your timber, which is that timber there. So that cold bridging is the same as that cold bridging there. So that SIPS panels are exactly the same as them. Now, just another point as well, walls. There's your wall. So we'll do a, a aerial drawing of your wall. That's your timber studs in your wall. That's your OSB for your outside. That's your breathable membrane. That's your insulation pushed tight to the back of there. That's your air gap. That's your moisture barrier, and that there is your plasterboard. That there is exactly the same as that, without the sound block, obviously. So that, that the wall structure is exactly the same, but you can't vent your wall. So for all them going that, you need to vent them. But how are you venting your wall? Because you can't vent your wall. You don't put holes in the bottom of your wall and top of the bottom of your wall, do you? So hybrid roofs do work in this situation because it's not high occupancy roof. You don't want to be this man. Look, he's sad, look, he's bent over because he can't stand up properly because his roof's not right. So that's why we do a hybrid roof. Same as the SIPS panel, same as your wall. And they work and nobody complains about them. So stop complaining about this. If you don't like this, do that. Thank you. Okay, so plasterboarding. Uh, you want to plasterboard your ceiling before you do your walls. So what you need to do is, on a long one like this, make sure that this line runs dead straight through and then all your plasterboards will fall in place. Um, what you want to do as well is, if you double timber in this, join it on the centre of that or thereabouts rather than the centre of that, and then you're not going to get any cracking or movement. Um, and you need to stagger your joints. So we'll have a joint there and a joint there, and on this next board, the joint will probably go somewhere there. What Adam's going to do and all, he's going to mark up his lights. He's going to ping a line on there, and he's going to cut his lights out. We're going to cut them out as we go along so that if we've made the balls up, we can rectify it straight away. So you can see the roof there. So basically we've got our 50 mil foil backed in there. We've then got our, sorry, it's 60 mil foil backed. We've then got our 50 mil rock wool sound block insulation. We've then got our moisture barrier and then our 12 and a half mil plasterboard. Adam's pinged the line on there now for that row of lights. We'll drill them out and make sure they're all in the right place. Um, what you want to do with these screws um, on the double ones, we're just staggering them. But you don't, you don't have to, but they want to be at least 300 apart, the screw holes. So he's cutting out there with a 70mm hole saw, and we're using the Makita impact driver. Um, not impact driver at all, normal drill. And there you can see he's located where the lights are, so that's where the spotlights are. So they're bang on. We'll carry on with this boarding now, get this ceiling finished, and then we'll show you the walls. Okay, so we're coming to the end of the plasterboard in now. Um, you see Adam's measuring there. So that, that wall there goes up with the pitch of the roof. Um, it, it's not really noticeable unless you put the CV on the wall um, and then you obviously see a tapered line. But apart from that, it's absolutely fine. It gives you maximum head height in the room we're able to do this. Um, so we've rock walled it, we've moisture barriered it. Uh, we're fixing it with these 38 mil rock screws and we're using these impact drivers to put them in. Um, board lifter 
Sticks on the floor, put on your board, pops the board up tight to the ceiling. So he's using the board lifter or the accelerator pedal as we call it to lift the board up. I'll put some screws in that now and it'll fix it. Right, so we're putting plasterboard back boxes in now. We use the deep ones just because it makes life a lot easier. Um, literally, level your line, pop it on, draw around it and then cut it out with the multi-tool. Um, what we'll do then, we'll pop the hole out the back of it and then we'll drill through so that when it's plastered we're not drilling in and disturbing any fresh plaster. Okay, day seven, we're finished for the day. Um, it's raining again, so we haven't got the roof on yet. Tomorrow's gonna to be a better day, so we'll see the clad the soffit and we'll put the rubber roof on as well and put the fish and trims on. So we've plasterboarded it all. We've put uh, 50, 60 mil, 50 mil in the wall, 60 mil rigid in the ceiling, and then we put our rock wall as well. So our sound block as well. We've cut out for all the lights. We've plasterboarded it in 12 and a half mil plasterboard, and we've used jip rock screws, 38 mil and we've cut all the back boxes and sockets. We haven't pushed the cables through because it makes the plasterer's life easier. They're all sat on the outside waiting to come through. Okay? Okay, day eight. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the roof on because it's not raining. Um, you can see just over my shoulder there, I've started putting, we're having a cedar soffit on this and we're having um, anthracite fascia. So what I'm doing, I'm putting the cedar on, I'm jointing it on the timbers there. I'll just switch cameras so you can have a look. So what I'm doing, I'm, I'm putting my joints on the timbers, staggering the joints obviously, and also cutting out for the lights with the 70 mil hole cutter and the last bit there's a rip so that there can be face fixed because by the time you've got the cedar up there and the double slit like you'll not see them fixings so that'll be it that cedar sort of soffit and um, what we'll do then we will uh, go down the side do the back and then we'll get the face shown as well we're fixing it with stainless steel pins which you need to do and um, we're using the 18 gauge uh, pass load and we're also using this little baby that I bought last night because uh, the big chop saws have another job. Um, it's actually DeWalt, but it feels yeah, pretty basic and crap to be fair, but we're going to go with that anyway. Right, so what we're going to do, we're going to run the seed around. Um, customer wanted it running vertically like that, so we're going to run it round. So obviously we're going tongue way that way and we're nailing through the tongue so it's concealed. On the edge there you can see I've nailed it, but the soffit's going to hang over that and that'll cover them. So this part obviously is running the wrong way. So what I've done there, I've planed that little bit there. So when I put that bit up to it there, well, well man, so when I put that bit up to it there, I've got a double bevel and a couple of them nails in there will be right. And that we're gonna then put all them pieces on all the way down that soffit. And you can see there, uh, just on a note from yesterday, I've filled all the sides with rock wool and also the front, just over the wall there, it's filled with rock wool. I don't know if you can see that properly from there. So look, there you go. You can see the, see the rock wall in there. Yeah, so that's all insulated. Okay, so we use an anthracite fascia on this. It's full replacement board. What we've had to do is rip it down with circular saw because it's a little bit too high. Um, nails, the poly top nails, 60 mil nails. Easiest way to do it with these, use your hammer as your space in. Hook your poly top on there. Can you see that? Do you need to zoom in? Can you see that? Hook your poly top on there, stand it up. Drive it in a bit, use your arm as you're spacing for your next one, hooky poly top on there, stand it up, and that's the easiest way to space them. They'll be all in a nice dead neat line. So what you want to do, it's a bit tricky, there needs two of you. Um, one guy there, you've got all your nails in like that. I'll go to this end now. You ready, Sean? We'll make sure it's pushed up nice and tight to the bottom of the cedar. And then if we just go along, and I'm pulling it up as I do it. Right, 
It's all right, look all right, Sean, bottom, Sean. Yeah, and then once you've got them all in, you can then go back, pull your film off, and then once you've done that like that, roll in a bit, pull your film off like such, and then just drive them home. And that's the fascia basically. Um, I'll show you the corner in a minute. I don't know if Adam can see under there now. You can see under there, Adam. So we've got a nice cedar soffit detail that's oiled, and then we've got this nice anthracite fascia as well. Right, Adam, let's turn that off. Right, so we've had rain, and you don't want to be getting this wet, so. This is going to be a fast video. What I'm going to do is try and glue half of this roof before that cloud over there comes and spoils it. So what you want to do is get plenty of glue on your roller. I haven't got time for using a pole. I know a lot of you going, why don't you use a pole? It's better on your back. Well, no time for that at the moment. Um, so you can see I've rolled the rubber back halfway, well, like a carpet. What I'll do then is, once I've painted this stripe on, I will then roll it, brush it out with the brush, get rid of any creases and air bubbles, make sure it's all bonded down to the roof. Like I say, we're trying to get this done before that cloud reaches us, which I don't really think is going to happen to be fair. It always takes a while to get your roller loaded up. What we'll do now is push that on there like that. Brush any creases out. Make sure there's no on it. And then jump on and get the next stripe done. So on. And so far if you don't want any little bits under it because like having a stone in your shoe even though it's a right little bit it looks absolutely massive how's that cloud looking at them <coughs> just had a massive downpour wasn't supposed to rain at all today kick the blower off the roof so that's bit in the dust what i'll do is i'll just film this half for you and now I'll cut it short at that because I'm going to have the same as the other basically and I need to get it done um, for those of you who commented I, I slipped up and says moisture barrier instead of vapour barrier or something such like yesterday there's a slip of words it happens, I'm busy like it or lump it, that's the way it's going to be so there you go, I'm brushing any creases out of it, any bubbles Get them all out. You can, just, you can physically see them and then you can brush them to the edge. Some out there. I'll pull that back and have a look see what it is. Massive bit of glue. Which we obviously don't want. I'll push that back down again. It's quite easy to do, it's quite quick. Um, you just need a dry day. Unbelievable, the sun's coming out a little bit now. Just don't do too much at a time. Stripe. I've found rolling it out like a carpet, it's definitely the best way. Keeps it clean, keeps it all tidy. The weight of it then will stop it from moving on the roof. So if you've already pre cut it, It'll be fine, you won't move it and then risk have it hanging over one side. So that's it basically. We're going to do that all the way to the end. Make sure we don't paint ourselves in the corner. We'll then roll back the other side. And then we'll put on our trims, the two part gutter trim. I already put the first part on. 
Adam, can you show the first part of the gutter from there? So that's the first part, it screws to the building. Um, what actually does then, the second part forces the rubber up into the groove, which traps the rubber and the rain pours off. There's another one on the market where you nail through it, which seems mad, but that's what you do with that one. But in my opinion, the two part one's the best on the market. You're not actually puncturing it by putting nails through it and it traps the rubber. So there you go, that's it. I'll carry on and I'll show you the end. So that's, that's the back part of the tr gutter trim, that's the front part, that's screwed to the building. The rubber goes over there and hangs down there. This then pushes the rubber up, traps it in there, and then that piece there clicks into there. So the base of the rubber goes like that into there, so your rainwater goes down there and into your gutter. So I'll just put this bit in and show you. Um, we've already put two lengths in, so it's a bit... This time of year it's not too bad, but come winter it's a nightmare to get in. It's really stiff and hard, so... You might want to give it a good stiff and hard, <laughs> excuse me. Right, so give it a good push in. So what happens now, I'm driving that rubber up into that gap. And then what I'll do then is back of the hand. And that's in then. So what will happen now is your rainwater will go down there, hit that drip, drop onto there and drop into your gutter. Um, and we're going to put the P-trims on next. I've forgotten the little poly top nails, so I'll show them corners going on tomorrow and them trims. So what we're going to do now is cut this off. R manufacturers recommend... 50 mil, a um, little overhang, and what will happen then is that trim that Sean's cut in there will then go on and hold all that. So if you want to run around to the front, John, uh, Sean, Adam, even, I'll um, I'll just show that going on. You can keep filming. So what I'm doing, I'm cutting this rubber off 50 mil all the way around. Managed to have a little break in the rain and managed to get this rubber off on. That's all bloody nightmare once plus rain all today um so stanley knife you need a good sharp stanley knife blade key to success watch you don't score your fascia um so sean lost his temper and kicked blower off at roof so that's broken now <laughs> have to get a new blower um right so i'm, I'm cutting it just roughly 50 mil you're only trying to gauge it um the roof the trims we're using are 3.5 long, so what we've done, we've divided the roof in two so that the trim joint is in the middle. It looks something about right. The fascia is obviously five metres, the roof's longer. So what we'll have is a fascia jointing strip going on there, which I've also forgotten the black poly, uh, the anthracite polytop nails, that's why we can't fit them. Right, so this trim there, it's got an, I don't know if you can see that, it's got an elongated hole in it. So the purpose of that is, is you put your nail in the middle, we're using black poly tops because it's a black trim. Put your nail in the middle, but I haven't drove it all the way home. And then when the sun comes out, can you see the movement on that? It will naturally move rather than not be able to move. So that's why the elongated hole is in there. So I'll centralise that one again. Again, you just, just don't drive it all the way home. And then it'll allow it to move when the sun gets on it. It's quite a good system, this, I feel. Um, if it don't rain, you're laughing. Can I have a curb trim joint, Sean, please? So like I said, we've measured this roof. We split it into two. And then you've got a curb trim joint strip, which then goes on like that. I'll push that all the way home. Then I'll move it just... <laughs> five mil so we can allow for a bit of expansion there and then what I'll do then I will give Sean a measurement and I'll reduce that measurement by five mil as well about ten mil 2790 Sean and then that will allow for any expansion in the in the um in the trim right Adam that's it yeah okay all right so these are the corner trims that go on um they've gone obviously the corners but the back there so that's the gutter so we're going to leave that there and we're going to put two little poly tops in there but what i've had before is these split so what i'm going to do is just pile it just through both bits of plastic put the poly top in and it also gives it a bit of movement then as well because you've got a bigger roll i've piloted a bigger roll like i said i've forgotten them and i've forgotten them and the little poly tops no i've got the strips just don't got the poly tops that's it isn't it um so we'll pop them on tomorrow, and then that'll be the roof complete. Plaster is coming tomorrow. 
Um, the guys have started the cable today, which they're going to continue. That's over there. We'll show you how that's all run. We'll show you the cables out there all run as well. Um, can I have another corner, please? And that's it. It's starting to come to an end now. This one... Like I said, I brought the blower, which is a bit of a pain. So, hold it nice and square. I'm literally just going through both bits of black plastic there and then that ring cut poly top will hold that in place on the corner I'm going to touch deep on that one but still should be alright yeah. and that's it, that's your corner so I'm just missing them corners now which we've got but like I say I've, I'm missing the little mini anthracite poly top so that's your yeah, your curb trim, your rubber roof, your soffit and your cedar, no sorry, your fascia and your cedar soffit which we've oiled and cut out for the lights as well. So there you go, that's your full roof, um, rubbered, trimmed, fascia, soffitted and it started to pee it down again. The joys of English weather. Right, so that's, it's practically finished. Like I said, I've forgotten the little poly top nails for the joints and the corners there. I'll bring them in tomorrow. So we've put cedar soffit in there. We've cut out for the lights. We've treated it with the UV stabiliser. We've put on anthracite fascia and then our roofing trims have gone on as well. We've also done the cedar all the way around the back there as well. And the two part gutter trim, which I showed you out of fit, which will run off into a gutter and a water butt at a later date. Right, uh, day, day nine. Day nine, um, plaster us in today. We always plaster our rooms. Full skim on it, professional skim, and then you give a lovely paint to us as well. That's Tom over there. Right, this is where I get my cedar from. Been ripping. Um, massive, massive timber yard. Let you have a little look down there. Um, I've, that's probably one of. Like it's really good quality cedar, the decking, loads of different styles, loads of different woods, loads of different styles of cladding as well. Um, we're forever using this because nobody else wants anything different at the moment, but they've got loads of different styles and absolutely monstrous pieces of wood as well. That's insane, isn't it? Look at the price on that. There's some tabletop. Yeah, but this is it. And they've got nice oak feather edge cladding there as well. Loads of different styles, massive, massive place, and a good price as well. Garden rooms. Why do they cost what they cost? Because that pile of wood there, which isn't a lot, is three and a half grand's worth. Okay, so cable run on this one. Customers putting that Cat5 cable already. We've dropped ours in as well. We've got a spare one. We always run two just in case one's ends up damaged. There's the 10 mil steel wide armoured, which we're going to connect in there. The guys have come down there. They've gone under this flag. They've gone straight down this gravel bed. If you follow me, I'll show you where they've gone then. Reinstated it all. Gone down the gravel bed, through the flower bed, down the side of the garden. If you keep coming, I'll show you. Round the trees. It's about a 40 metre run, this one down this side as well and here there they've cut across now to get to the garden room so you can see there you're about 600 depth there's a steel wide armoured there's the two cat fives there is our if you can see it there our warning electricity tape um, and you just come around there I'll show you how we come up then so the cat fives coming out of the ground and it's in this plastic conduit then it will then run around there and all this will be hidden by cladding then the steel wide armour runs up there and just behind there is where the consumer unit will go. So what we'll do, we'll cut that off and we'll send it through there and that'll all be fixed up. And all these wires then will also run into the consumer unit as well, because they're for the power. So obviously this is all going to get clad. We're going to put a fence here. We're going to put a gutter on there and the sides and the front will be cedar. So we're going to backfill this now. It's raining yet again. Um, so we're 10 days in now. Um, we're almost finished. We'll be finished by Wednesday next week now. So if you want to, we'll have a little talk about what we've done. Um, we've built this, it's five metres by three and a half metres deep. We've used our tantalised joist for the floor. We've put it on our rod system. You can see the rods there. What we're going to do and all, we're going to drop a two metre composite deck in front of this. We had these doors fit. I know you all wanted them to see them get fit, but the fitter came and he fit them last night. Again, as always, beautiful glide on them. Three metre 
aluminium anthracite so if we have a quick look inside i'll show you inside as well um it's been fully plastered out yesterday it's still really damp we've second fixed all the electrics when we come back monday it'll be ready for painting we've got a consumer unit up there which is going to get certified and tested we've just put a test on it now so everything works fine um there's a little window there as well again aluminium anthracite gray um cedar for monday that all get fit we're having columns on this as well so you'll see the columns get built if you come out here i'll show you around here we run the steel wire diamond up um we cut across the lawn there i showed you that yesterday and it's gone up back into the consumer unit this is how we run our cables on this job um so where we where we've gone through we fill it with silicon then as well I always have a drip loop on as well so all cables are run externally this will all be clad in cedar we've got an anthracite fascia there with a cedar soffit round the back here is where the steel wide armoured comes up it goes up and in the consumer unit this is going to get um like a metal roofing sheet on the back of this and this fence there all them laurels are coming out on monday and we're going to put in a feather edge fence so that's it there's one more thing i want to say to you and all um build packs now i've had loads of nice emails saying you know appreciate the build pack thanks for build pack it's detailed it's great and then this little bad boy arrived today there you go thanks very much roy o'brien really appreciate that so he's obviously happy with his pan plan pack and i'll be happy tonight having a little drink of them Okay, so if you're out the build pack, go to end it video and you'll see a link for the build packs and you, there's loads of different sizes and I'm going to do one this weekend and all. It's going to be a five by four and it's going to have a cut off on the front, you know, the, the angle, uh, 22 and a half degree angle cut off on the front. Okay, so like, subscribe, follow and oh, another one, one more thing might be a possibility. We're going to be on the one show in a couple of weeks, so I'll let you know how that one goes. Thank you. Day 11, um, we're back on next Monday. I'm going to start on the cedar. Um, we're going to get this all clad in cedar today, we'll get it oiled as well, and they're making a start on the fence, I'll show you what's going on around there as well. Um, what we're doing, we're taking all these laurels out, and we're going to build a feather edge fence from that point there to that point there, all the way along the back. Up, Sean. We are, mate. So, I'm, I'm going to start fitting the cedar, what I'll do is I'll start on that side there, as long as I get my first length in, plumb, then all the rest will just follow suit and I'm just going to cut them all the same length. We're going to use this Pazload second fix. It's 18 gauge because it fires a smaller head in and we're using stainless steel pins as well. Yeah. Right, so this first piece of cedar, I'll just stand back so you can see it. First piece of cedar has gone on corner there. I've plumbed it down but because the building's right anyway, it's plumbed there anyway. So what I've done, I've first fixed it down that side because our corner will go over that detail and finish that. And then what I've done, I've then spiked it through just before it meets the groove there, just on the tongue. And when I, I know a couple of you have been questioning what a spike was. It's literally just sending the nail or screw through at an angle. So what will happen is, let me just steady that up there. Um, it'll go through at that angle like that and go through into the slate button behind it. And so they're 50 mil stainless steel brads. Okay, so what I've done, I've got the cedar on both sides. Um, I'll infill the top and the bottom after. Um, Sean's just informed me that I've not put the dummy pillars on these ones, so I normally put them on first. So what I'm going to do now is drop the dummy pillars on, and I'll show you how I make them as well. Um, like I say, I wouldn't normally see the first, I'd normally do the pillars first, but obviously I've forgotten that. Right, so what I've done, we're going to make the columns out of CLS and then clad them. So I've cut 10 degrees on the top. I know it's 10 degrees just because I've done it a few times. So there's a 10 degree cut on there. Adam's going to hold that there. Now I'm doing this backwards because I don't normally do it this way around. So what I'll do now, I'll just get my pencil and I'll draw that line on there. So what I'll do now is cut that off and I'll make four, I'll use that as a template and I'll make four of them exactly the same and then both columns will be the same height and the same width. Tell me what we're doing before you start doing it. Right, so what I've done, um, that's, that's the angle there that we've cut. I've had to cut it with circular saw because obviously chop saw is never going to get that and I'll use that as a template. Adam will hold that up and it'll show you what it's going to look like. Right, so like I said, 10 degree angle on the top. There you go. And that will drop on there like that. So what I'm going to do basically, I'm going to put another one there, make a ladder frame, fix it to the roof, fix it to the, the cedar and clad it then. Right, so that's the first part of the frame on. So 10 degrees at the top. We cut it a big splay at the bottom. It's like just a ladder flame, basically. So what I've done, I've, I've fixed it at the top there, up into the soffit, and I've fixed it at the bottom there into the wall. Obviously, we, we wouldn't have put the cedar on normally. Right, so there, there's the basic framework for the dummy pillar. So that just want cladding now. 
So what I've done now, I've um, clad the front of the column, cut the 10 degrees on the top, so there's three pieces of cedar gone on there. Um, I'll do the sides now, and then I'll put the corner beads right, on. Right, so I've clad the front, I've clad the side there, poured that detail down. What we're going to do then is put a right angle bead on there, cover that up, that all nice. Um, what I'm going to do now is do this other side. But what I'll have to do is I'll have to put a piece on there vertical first and work out because obviously I need to start there, but I need to make sure I'm vertical as well with a level. So I've forgotten to put the sound on here, but basically that's the side um, clad. And what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to show you, I put the angle bead on the front of it there on both sides, which has finished it off really nice. Right, that's day 11 done. Um, we managed to get the cedar on the front. I forgot to put the columns in, but they're in now. Um, you can see I've finished them there with the right angled corner trim, which looks nice. John's put a, a coat of, uh, of the oil on, the UV stabiliser. Um, I've showed you how to do them, showed you how to clad it. Tomorrow now we will clad the reveals, put the archetrives on. That'll be the front complete. Then we're going to fly down the sides with the cedar if it's not raining. Uh, put on this outside socket that's still missing. They're putting the fence up at the back here, which I told you about, it's feather edge fence. Um, we're just going to uh, drop some rails in between there and feather edge it this side so you can actually see the rails, that's where the customer wants it. Um, and we've they've managed to put brown posts in there, so they're coming back out tomorrow and we'll exchange them for green ones. Um, but that's it, yeah. So tomorrow, and the electrician's been and he's signed it off as well, so tomorrow we'll have it all seeded. We'll have this fence done and then all we'll be left to do is the back and the decking and get rid of all this crap as well. Day 12, um, we're all here today, so Amy's jumped on cedar, I'm jumped on fence and John's uh, is putting coat of paint on inside. So if you come over I'll show what she's done. So we did the corners yesterday, we carried on with the cedar, she's put the cedar reveals on. That ties the window in and then she'll drop an architrave around there as well. Can you see that properly, yeah? Okay, um, she stopped there for a reason because I've not brought enough cedar so we're going to carry on with that tomorrow um around there on the front she's putting in so you can see she's putting the top reveal in there so what basically is happening with that she's put a piece of cedar in she's ripped it down to right length and then she's fixed it through up into the head there as well she'll do the same with the sides and then drop the architrave on there as well do you want to jump in here adam um john's in here He's put a mist coat on, which is basically water and emulsion mixed through. Um, that's your first coat on fresh plaster, and he's going the second coat on the ceiling now. Um, bit of a mess in here at the moment, but tomorrow we'll have all the laminate down and skirting boards on as well. Um, and I'll show you what me and Adam are doing round back. We are putting um, his feather edge fence on. It's a bit, it's a bit different to the traditional fence. What customer wants, he wants it flush through like that, rather than what we normally do is put them rails on the front. But um, he wants it sort of like as tight as possible. So what we're going to do then is just feather edge the full way down there. Um, you can see there. Bit of a dog leg in this fence as well. So this kind of method will work well as well. Okay, so it's a feather edge fence. What we're doing, we've got a 90 mil spacer block. Yeah. We're tapping it across there. And then off we go. We'll do that every 10 boards. And then we'll put level on it to make sure that it's still level. Because yeah. obviously they're rough sawn boards. So they're not all like dead dead same size also what we're going to do as well we're going to ping a line across it and cut obviously it tops off uh, it's just a bit of a faster way of doing it for ourselves uh, much to the public the shock of the neighbors at the moment they were looking out the window thinking oh my god but when it's done it'll look mint and they're done uh, i'll push it back yeah. Yeah. all right i don't know what to do Um, we've just pinged the line on, we put this straight edge, we're using it as a guide for it, so and I'm just going to go along and cut the top off so it's, it's not level, it's just running 1.9 to 1.9 each end on, on lay at land. Okay, so we're going to have a little bit of a tool talk, a little demonstration and a review. First up is Pazlord IM350 Plus, um, it's a solid gun, it's been out years hasn't it? Um, it's quite fast. 
feels good in the hands, it's nice and light. Downside to it, it's gas. Um, they do clog up quite a bit sometimes and need cleaning out. And come winter time, the gas can freeze, but bonus side to it is it's light, it feels good in your hand. It's very reliable. Um, I'll just show you that hook on there and off we're hanging over a joist. This, it retails at about 516 quid with two of these little batteries. It's got a nice little feature there that you can lock the battery in, but it hasn't, isn't actually in. And then sun it on and then it's powered up and ready to go. Next tip is the Hakoki. Um, it's getting quite good reviews. Um, again, doesn't feel too bad in your hand, although it's very, very heavy. It's got the joist hook. I don't know what, why they've gone for such a big one, but I guess for some decision um, again is this on bump this one John yeah this is on bump it's fast just all end of that Adam that's what wood don't bounce too much um, you can hear the ramp up um, it's faster than it's faster than the Paz Lord because um, that hasn't got a bump feature on it that well that one has but it's not that fast and then there's this one um, how much is that one, John? 500 and... Two, 500 with two 5 amp batteries. 500 with two 5 amp batteries. And then there's this one. Um, it's pretty much new out. It's got brilliant reviews everywhere you go. Uh, Milwaukee. It's about 600 and... I think I paid 670 quid. Two 5 amp batteries on it as well. It's on, We put it onto bump feature there. So I just want to show you actually how quick it is. Right, you ready, Adam? There you go, it's run out of nails, it's not fired two in, but the majority, they're all in, they're all sunk. Um, it's fast, but it is ridiculously heavy. It's the heaviest out of the three. It's also got the hook on as well, but it seems to have opted out on their design there and gone for a cheap little crappy bit of metal, which is quite sharp and going to hurt you. Um, but there you go. So that one there, 670 quid, really heavy, heavy out, heaviest out of all of them, but the fastest. Next, this one, Hakoki, not quite as heavy as that, again, Getting good reviews, not quite as fast though. And then there's the old favourite, the Paz Lord. Um, although this come winter time, the gas is going to start to freeze up on that. So, opinions. Um, that one, I've got two of them. I'll always have them. I'm not interested in buying one of them, John, I'm afraid. <laughs> this one, I guess I guess used to the weight of it. You can actually buy an extended magazine, so it'll take two racks of nails. Um, but it is a beast. But let themselves down there. So that's it, that's your five minute review on three different types of first fix nail guns. All right. Right, day 12, we're done on the cedar on the front. Um, Amy's finished off there. You can see she's done the cedar reveals, cedar architraves. We don't mount, we don't mitre the architraves because they'll only open. Um, so that's the best way of doing them we find. The columns are done. This full side is oiled and done. I follow me around here. We've put in this feather edge fence. Um, that's been now leveled off and trimmed. See that? Full length foot building. There's a dog leg in it there because he's got two gardens meeting towards each other. We're um, cladding the back in some metal roofing sheeting as well. I'm just struggling to get hold of that at the moment. That'll be an outside light there as well. We'll have an outside socket here as well. We've seeded round this window as well, so we've only got another 20 lengths of cedar and then that's all the cedar complete. Again, she's done the cedar reveals there, cedar archetypes, notched over like that. We don't mitre them, we just put them like that because when they open up they look absolutely perfect just like that. There's a little bead to run along the top there as well. So that's it, day 12, oh, inside. John has, he's got, yeah, he's had two coats on the ceiling now. That's looking pretty good, is that now? Um, and there's a, like a, a mossy grey colour going on the walls. So tomorrow we're going to clear all this out, get the cedar gone, get all the rush out. We'll get this laminate floor fit down as well. And um, we'll get some skirting boards and architraves on. And that'll be practically complete then. And tomorrow we're also going to get this turf up and prepare for the base. Day, day 13, um, we've just fit this laminate floor in. Um, what I'm going to do now is shoot off and get the skirting boards. John's give the ceiling two coats so all the lights can go back up there. Uh, they're fire rated down lighters on the LED, they're dimmable. Um, Adam's just about to put the dimmer switches on. Like I said, we had it all certified and tested. Um, what's left to do now? We're just finishing the ceiling on the outside. We'll get it all skirted board in there, do the Zarka tries, do a little window board over there. I'll show you that detail. And then um, we'll crack on with decking and, and border for gravel and then we're done.
Okay, day 13, um, I've got to shoot off now, but we're practically finished internally. Um, it's had one coat of this colour, which John's been putting on. It's two coats on the ceiling. Well, I think it's three coated that now. All the lights have been put back in. We've fit this laminate floor in. It's just getting the skirting boards, the window board, the MDF reveals, and the architecture around there. So they'll be more or less done, apart from painting on here, finished tomorrow. Um, and then we'll jump outside tomorrow and start on this decking and, and do the decorative um, aggregates around the edge and all. Okay, so it's actually day 16, but we've just come back to finish a couple of things this morning, me and John. So it took us 15 days. We are awkward garden rooms. Um, I promise you a full tutorial. I hope I've provided you with that. If you follow me around, we'll have a look. We'll talk about everything we've done and we'll go through the full job as well. So what we've done, we've connected up into his electricity supply there, 10 mil steel wide armoured cable. We've dropped it down under that flag and we've run along that gravel path and we've run down the side of the border and then over to the garden room. We've also got two Cat5 cables there as well. One's, um, one's, one's actually fixed and the other's like just in case there was an issue with that one. So there's two there. So the steel wide armoured's gone down there. I showed you that. We buried it at 600. We've put our tape over the top of it as well to warn anybody that's digging that there's a cable there. We've gone right down the border and gone round the back of these trees. We've cut across this lawn and we've gone up the back of the unit and straight in and I'll show you that in a minute. Right, so we took out his laurel bush that ran the way along. We've put in a feather edge fence there as well. Um, we've put in a little border around which we've infilled with slate so that his little lawn mower can come up to that and find its way around. Right, so on the back, we normally use feather edge, but what we've done on this one is fix these roofing sheets to it. The finishing anthracite, no maintenance on them required at all. Um, we've fit a bulkhead there light as well. He's asked for it to be that low before somebody says, oh, because so the light's not shining over the fence. There's um, a photo cell there, which I'll explain for you as well. There's a gutter and downpipe, which runs across. We've dropped it into this water bus, but so you can harvest his water. Um, we've backfilled all this with slate chippings, 20 mil slate chippings. So if you remember, from the start, we used our concrete pile system. We've built it up. We've used our 4B2 and 4B3 treated. We've infilled with 100 mil insulation. Then we used 22 mil acre protect on the floor. We built our walls out of 4B2 CLS timber. Our roof, because it's over a three meter span, we've dropped in 5B2s, but we've doubled them up. We've bolted them together. Um, inside, we put 50 mil insulation in the walls. We have also put some sound block. Just show you these doors, that's literally, they're as good as you can get. Absolutely brilliant doors. Um, inside then, so we've 50 mil insulation in the wall, 100 mil insulation in the ceiling. We've then put a moisture barrier on as well. We've used 12 and a half mil plaster boards. It's had a plaster finish. John's finished it in gray and white. Um, we've put fire rated down lighters in the ceiling. We've got our consumer unit over here, which has been certified and tested. We've got a two kilowatt digital heater, which is plenty enough for this size room. We've got fire rated lights in here. We've got fire rated lights in the soffit. We've also put a pendant drop on there. We've not fixed it to the ceiling because the customer's gonna fix his own, but we've also put a patras in there. If you remember and all, we put patrases in the wall for the heater and for the TV bracket. So when you fix it, you've got a good fix in. The roof, it's a one piece rubber roof membrane. We've fit anthracite fascia. We've fit a cedar soffit, it's western grade red cedar and it's treated with a UV stabiliser. I showed you how to build these dummy pillars. They really make the building look well. Um, we've put on these corners as well, which finish it off nice. Um, what else have we done, John? Yeah, decking, composite decking. So we've dropped a 4B2 treated decking base on there and we've put on this composite decking as well. So it's very low maintenance, it'll just wash off. Uh, we've got a slate bed round as well. So that, that's it basically. Uh, that's, that's the full build, start to finish, 15 days all in. So if you'd like to please comment and subscribe, that'd be wonderful. And I'll put a link to, on the end towards uh, my build packs, which are available for sale at my website on www.awkwardgardenrooms.com. Um, and full instructions how to build one of these yourself. Okay, so thanks very much and I will see you on the next one, which is next week and I think the one show coming up to film us all, so that might be something else worth watching for you. Thank you.